A jet pack, rocket belt, or rocket pack is a device worn on the back which uses jets of gas or liquid to propel the wearer through the air. The concept has been present in science fiction for almost a century and became widespread in the 1960s. Real jet packs have been developed using a variety of mechanisms, but their uses are much more limited than their fictional counterparts because of the challenges of Earth's atmosphere, gravity, low energy density of available fuels, and the human body not being suited to fly, and they are principally used for stunts. A practical use for the jetpack has been in extravehicular activities for astronauts. Topic overview. In the most general terms, a jetpack is a wearable device which allows the user to fly by providing thrust. With the exception of use in a microgravity environment, this thrust must be upwards so as to overcome the force of gravity, and must be enough to overcome the weight of the user, the jetpack itself and its fuel. This necessarily requires the jetpack to continually push mass in a downwards direction, while some designs have power and or mass supplied from an external, ground-based source, untethered flight requires all of a flight's fuel to be carried within the pack. This results in problems relating to the overall mass ratio, which limits the maximum flight time to tens of seconds, rather than the sustained flight envisaged in science fiction. <laughs> <laughs> Liquid-fueled rocket pack <laughs> Andreyev, oxygen and methane, with wings The first pack design was developed in 1919 by the Russian inventor Alexander Fyodorovich Andreyev. The project was well regarded by Nikolai Reinen and technology historians U. V. Beryakov and S. V. Golodyuk. Later it was issued a patent but apparently was not built or tested. It was oxygen and methane powered likeliest a rocket with wings each roughly 1 meter 3 feet long. Hydrogen peroxide powered rocket packs A hydrogen peroxide powered engine is based on the decomposition reaction of hydrogen peroxide. Nearly pure 90% in the Bell rocket belt hydrogen peroxide is used. Pure hydrogen peroxide is relatively stable, but in contact with a catalyst, for example, silver, it decomposes into a mixture of superheated steam and oxygen in less than one tenth millisecond, increasing in volume 5,000 times 2H2O2 2H2O plus O2. The reaction is exothermic, i.e., accompanied by the liberation of much heat, about 2,500 kilojoules per kilogram, 5,800 BTU per pound, forming in this case a steam gas mixture at 740 degrees Celsius, 1,360 degrees Fahrenheit. This hot gas is used exclusively as the reaction mass and is fed directly to one or more jet nozzles. The great disadvantage is the limited operating time. The jet of steam and oxygen can provide significant thrust from fairly lightweight rockets, but the jet has a relatively low exhaust velocity and hence a poor specific impulse. Currently, such rocket belts can only fly for about 30 seconds because of the limited amount of fuel the user can carry unassisted. A more conventional bipropellant could more than double the specific impulse. However, although the exhaust gases from the peroxide-based engine are very hot, they are still significantly cooler than those generated by alternative propellants. Using a peroxide-based propellant greatly reduces the risk of a fire, explosion which would cause severe injury to the operator. In contrast to, for example, turbojet engines, which mainly expel atmospheric air to produce thrust, rocket packs are far simpler to build than devices using turbojets. The classical rocket pack construction of Wendell Moore can be made under workshop conditions, given good engineering training and a high level of tool-making craftsmanship. The main disadvantages of this type of rocket pack are Short duration of flight a maximum of around 30 seconds. The high expense of the peroxide propellant. The inherent dangers of flying below minimum parachute altitude, and hence without any safety equipment to protect the operator if there is an accident or malfunction. Safely learning how to fly it, given that there are no dual control training versions. The sheer difficulty of manually flying such a device, these circumstances limit the sphere of the application of rocket packs to very spectacular public demonstration flights, i.e., stunts. For example, a flight was arranged in the course of the opening ceremony of the 1984 Summer Olympic Games in Los Angeles, USA. Topic: <laughs> Justin Capra's flying backpack. 
Justin Capra claimed that he invented a flying rucksack. Romanian, Rusak in 1956 in Romania, and, without arousing any apparent interest, informed the American embassy of his idea. In 1962 a backpack was created at Bell Laboratories, following Justin Capra's prototype. The backpack is now displayed in a museum where it's kept safe. <laughs> Jump belt In 1958, Gary Burdett and Alexander Bohr, Thiokol Corporation engineers, created a jump belt which they named Project Grasshopper. Thrust was created by high-pressure compressed nitrogen. Two small nozzles were affixed to the belt and directed vertically downward. The wearer of the belt could open a valve, letting out nitrogen from the gas cylinder through the nozzles, which tossed him upward to a height of 7 meters 23 feet. After leaning forward, it was possible with the aid of the jump belt's thrust to run at 45 to 50 km per hour, 28 to 31 miles per hour. Later, Burdett and Bohr tested a hydrogen peroxide-powered version. The jump belt was demonstrated by a serviceman in action, but as no financing was forthcoming, there was no further testing. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Aeropack In 1959 Aerojet General Corporation won a U.S. Army contract to devise a jet pack or rocket pack. At the start of 1960 Richard Peoples made his first tethered flight with his Aeropack. U.S. <laughs> Army interest The military did not lose interest in this type of flight vehicle. Transport studies of the U.S. Army Transportation Research Command determined that personal jet devices could have diverse uses, for reconnaissance, crossing rivers, amphibious landing, accessing steep mountain slopes, overcoming minefields, tactical maneuvering, etc. The concept was named, Small Rocket Lift Device SRLD. Within the framework of this concept the administration concluded a big contract with the Aerojet General Company in 1959 to research the possibility of designing an SRLD suitable for Army purposes. Aerojet came to the conclusion that the version with the engine running on hydrogen peroxide was most suitable. However, it soon became known to the military that engineer Wendell Moore of the Bell Aerosystems Company had for several years been carrying out experiments to make a personal jet device. After becoming acquainted with his work, servicemen during August 1960 decided to commission Bell Aerosystems with developing an SRLD. Wendell Moore was appointed Chief Project Engineer. <laughs> <laughs> Bell Textron Rocket Belt In 1960, the Bell Rocket Belt was presented to the public. The jet of gas was provided by a hydrogen peroxide powered rocket, but the jet could also be provided by a turbojet engine, a ducted fan, or other kinds of rockets powered by solid fuel, liquid fuel or compressed gas usually nitrogen. This is the oldest known type of jet pack or rocket pack. One Bell rocket belt is on display at the Smithsonian Institution's National Air and Space Museum Annex, the Stephen F. Udvar Hazy Center, located near Dulles Airport. RB-2000 rocket belt This was a successor to the Bell rocket belt. <laughs> Bell Pogo The Bell Pogo was a small rocket-powered platform that two people could ride on. Its design used features from the Bell rocket belt. Topic. Powerhouse Productions Rocket Belt More commonly known as the Rocket Man, Powerhouse Productions, owned and operated by Kinney Gibson, manufactures the 32nd Flying Rocket Belt June 1994 and organizes rocket belt performances. Since 1983 Powerhouse Productions has performed show flights in over 40 countries such as the Carnival in Rio de Janeiro, Super Bowls, the Rose Parade, Daytona 500, and the Michael Jackson Dangerous World Tour, as well as many television shows including Walker, Texas Ranger, The Fall Guy and NCIS. Powerhouse Rocket Belt pilots include stuntman Kinney Gibson and Dan Schlund. <laughs> Jetpack International. Jetpack International made three types of wingless jetpacks 
A Jetpack H202 was flown for 34 seconds in Central Park on 9 April 2007 episode of The Today Show and sold for $150,000. As of January 2009 their H202 jetpacks are for demonstration only, not for sale. Details of the likely consumer model, Falcon, were scheduled for an official announcement on May 1, 2012, but the company is currently behind schedule. <laughs> <laughs> Current technology At the TechCrunch Disrupt conference in 2014, Astro Teller, head of Google X Google's research laboratory, said they investigated jetpacks but found them too inefficient to be practical, with fuel consumption as high as 940L, 100 km 1 quarter mpg US, and were as loud as a motorcycle, so they decided not to pursue developing them. In recent years, the rocket pack has become popular among enthusiasts, and some have built them for themselves. The pack's basic construction is rather simple, but its flying capability depends on two key parts, the gas generator, and the thrust control valve. The rocket packs being built today are largely based on the research and inventions of Wendell Moore at Bell Helicopter. One of the largest stumbling blocks that would-be rocket pack builders have faced is the difficulty of obtaining concentrated hydrogen peroxide, which is no longer produced by many chemical companies. The few companies that produce high concentration hydrogen peroxide only sell to large corporations or governments, forcing some amateurs and professionals to set up their own hydrogen peroxide distillation installations. High concentration hydrogen peroxide for rocket belts was produced by Peroxide Propulsion Gothenburg, Sweden from 2004 to 2010, but after a serious accident Peroxide Propulsion stopped making it. Turbo jet packs Packs with a turbojet engine are fueled with traditional kerosene-based jet fuel. They have higher efficiency, greater height and a duration of flight of many minutes, but they are complex in construction and very expensive. Only one working model of this pack was made, it underwent flight tests in the 1960s and at present it no longer flies. Jet packs and rocket packs have much better flight time on a tankful of fuel if they have wings like an aeroplane's. Topic. Bell Jet Flying Belt, wingless In 1965 Bell Aerosystems concluded a new contract with the Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency to develop a jet pack with a turbojet engine. This project was called the Jet Flying Belt, or simply the Jet Belt. Wendell Moore and John K. Holbert, a specialist in gas turbines, worked to design a new turbojet pack. Williams Research Corporation now Williams International in Wald Lake, Michigan, designed and built a new turbojet engine to Bell specifications in 1969. It was called the WR-19, had a rated thrust of 1,900 newtons 430 lbf and weighed 31 kilograms 68 pounds. The jet belt first flew free on 7 April 1969 at the Niagara Falls Municipal Airport. Pilot Robert Corter flew about 100 meters (330 feet) in a circle at an altitude of 7 meters (23 feet), reaching a speed of 45 kilometers per hour (28 miles per hour). The following flights were longer, up to 5 minutes. Theoretically, this new pack could fly for 25 minutes at velocities up to 135 kilometers per hour (84 miles per hour). In spite of successful tests, the U.S. Army lost interest. The pack was complex to maintain and too heavy. Landing with its weight on their back was hazardous to the pilot, and catastrophic loss of a turbine blade could have been lethal. Thus, the Bell Jet Flying Belt remained an experimental model. On 29 May 1969, Wendell Moore died of complications from a heart attack he had suffered six months earlier, and work on the turbojet pack was ended. Bell sold the sole version of the Bell Pack, together with the patents and technical documentation, to Williams Research Corporation. This pack is now in the Williams International Company Museum. The jet belt used a small turbofan engine which was mounted vertically, with its air intake downward. Intake air was divided into two flows. One flow went into the combustion chamber, the other flow bypassed the engine, then mixed with the hot turbine gases, cooling them and protecting the pilot from the high temperatures generated. In the upper part of the engine the exhaust was divided and entered two pipes which led to jet nozzles. The construction of the nozzles made it possible to move the jet to any side. Kerosene fuel was stored in tanks beside the engine. 
Control of the turbojet pack was similar to the rocket pack, but the pilot could not tilt the entire engine. Maneuvering was by deflecting the nozzles. By inclining levers, the pilot could move the jets of both nozzles forward, back, or sideways. The pilot rotated left, right by turning the left handle. The right handle governed the engine thrust. The jet engine was started with the aid of a powder cartridge. While testing this starter, a mobile starter on a special cart was used. There were instruments to control the power of the engine, and a portable radio to connect and transmit telemetry data to ground-based engineers. On top of the pack was a standard auxiliary landing parachute. It was effective only when opened at altitudes above 20 meters (66 feet). This engine was later the basis for the propulsion units of Tomahawk and other cruise missiles. Topic: <laughs> Visa Pavianen's jet-assisted wingsuit. On 25 October 2005 in Lati in Finland, Visa Pavarainen jumped from a hot air balloon in a wingsuit with two small turbojet jet engines attached to his feet. Each turbojet provided approximately 160 N of thrust and ran on kerosene jet A1 fuel. Pavarainen apparently achieved approximately 30 seconds of horizontal flight with no noticeable loss of altitude. Topic. Yves Rossi's jet wingpack Swiss ex-military and commercial pilot Yves Rossi developed and built a winged pack with rigid aeroplane-type carbon fiber wings spanning about 2.4 meters 8 feet and four small kerosene-burning JetCat P400 jet engines underneath. These engines are large versions of a type designed for model aeroplanes. He wears a heat-resistant suit similar to that of a firefighter or racing driver to protect him from the hot jet exhaust. Similarly, to further protect the wearer, the engines are modified by adding a carbon fiber heat shield extending the jet nozzle around the exhaust tail. Rossi claims to be, "...the first person to gain altitude and maintain a stable horizontal flight thanks to aerodynamic carbon foldable wings," which are folded by hinges at their midpoint. After being lifted to altitude by a plane, he ignites the engines just before he exits the plane with the wings folded. The wings unfold while in free fall, and he then can fly horizontally for several minutes, landing with the help of a parachute. He achieves true controlled flight using his body and a hand throttle to maneuver. Jet wingsuits use small turbojets, but differ from other aircraft in that the fuselage and flight control surfaces consist of a human. The system is said by Rossi to be highly responsive and reactive in flight, to the point where he needs to closely control his head, arm, and leg movements to avoid an uncontrolled spin. The engines on the wing must be aligned precisely during setup, also to prevent instability. An electronic starter system ensures that all four engines ignite simultaneously. In the event of a spin, the wing unit can be detached from the pilot, and pilot and wing unit descend to Earth separately, each with a parachute. Since 2007, Rossi has conducted some of his flight tests from a private airfield, Skydive Empera Brava, in Empera Brava, Girona, Costa Brava, Spain. Rossi's jetpack was exhibited on 18 April 2008 on the opening day of the 35th Exhibition of Inventions at Geneva. Rossi and his sponsors spent over $190,000 to build the device. His first successful trial flight was on 24 June 2004 near Geneva, Switzerland. Rossi has made more than 30 powered flights since. In November 2006 he flew with a later version of his jetpack. On 14 May 2008 he made a successful six-minute flight from the town of Bex near Lake Geneva. He exited a Pilatus Porter at 2,300 meters 7,500 feet with his jetpack. It was the first public demonstration before the world's press. He made effortless loops from one side of the Rhone Valley to the other and rose 790 meters 2,600 feet. It has been claimed that the military was impressed and asked for prototypes for the powered wings, but that Rossi kindly refused the request stating that the device was only intended for aviation enthusiasts. On the 26th of September 2008, Eve successfully flew across the English Channel from Calais, France to Dover, England in 9 minutes 7 seconds. His speed reached 300 kilometers per hour, 190 miles per hour during the crossing and was 200 kilometers per hour, 120 miles per hour when he deployed the parachute. Since then he has in several flights managed to fly in a formation with 3 military jets and cross the Grand Canyon but he failed to fly across the Strait of Gibraltar he made an emergency landing in the water on the 13th of October 2015 a show flight was performed in Dubai 
Two jetpacks operated by Rossi and Vince Reffe flew in formation with an Airbus A380 jetliner. Topic: <laughs> Troy Hartman, jetpack and parafoil. In 2008 Troy Hartman started designing a wingless jetpack with two turbojet motors strapped to his back, later he added a parafoil as a wing. <laughs> Fritz Unger, jetpack with rigid wings As at 2013 Fritz Unger in Germany is developing a jetpack called Skyflash with rigid wings about 3.4 meters 11 feet wingspan and two turbojets designed to run on diesel fuel. It is designed for takeoff from the ground using four undercarriage wheels on the front of his chest and abdomen. Topic jetpack Aviation Wingless Jetpack On 3 November 2015, Jetpack Aviation demonstrated the JB-9 in Upper New York Bay in front of the Statue of Liberty. The JB-9 carries 4.5 kg of kerosene fuel that burns through two vectored thrust AMT Nike jet engines at a rate of 3.8 liters one US gallon per minute for up to 10 minutes of flying time, depending on pilot weight. Weight of fuel is a consideration, but it is reported to start with 150 meters 500 feet per minute climb rate that doubles as the fuel burns off. While this model has been limited to 102 km per hour 55 knots, the prototype of the JB-10 is reported to fly at over 200 km per hour 110 knots. This is a true jetpack, a backpack that provides jet-powered flight. Most of the volume is the fuel tank, with twin turbine jet engines gimbal mounted on each side. The control system is identical to the Bell rocket belt, tilting the handgrips vectors the thrust, left right and forward back, by moving the engines, twisting left hand moves two nozzle skirts for yaw, twisting the right hand counterclockwise increases throttle. Jetpack Aviation was started by Australian businessman David Maiman with the technical know-how coming from Nelson Tyler, prolific inventor of helicopter-mounted camera stabilizers and one of the engineers that worked on the Bell rocket belt that was used in the 1984 Olympics. Topic. Flyboard Air Flyboard Air, invented by Frankie Zapata, allows flight up to 3,000 meters 10,000 feet and has a top speed of 150 km per hour 93 miles per hour. It also has 10 minutes autonomy. Topic. Daedalus Flight Pack See full article Daedalus Flight Pack this particular innovation saw two jets attached to the back of an exoskeleton, worn by the operator. At the same time, two additional jets were added to the arms, and could be moved with the arms to control movement. It was devised by Richard Browning of Gravity Industries. In space Rocket packs can be useful for spacewalks. While near Earth a jetpack has to produce a g-force of at least 1 gram a smaller g-force, providing only some deviation from free fall is of little use here. For excursions outside a free-falling spaceship, a small g-force providing a small deviation from free fall is quite useful. Hence much less delta V is consumed per unit time, and not during the whole EVA. With only small amounts of thrust needed, safety and temperature are much more manageable than in the atmosphere in Earth's gravity field. Nevertheless, it is currently worn to be used only in case of emergency, the simplified aid for EVA rescue safer. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Hydrojet packs. The 21st century has seen a new approach to jet packs where water is used as a high density propulsion fluid. This requires a very large mass of fluid that makes a self-contained jet pack infeasible. Instead, this approach separates the engine, fuel and fluid supply from the pilot's flying apparatus, using a long flexible hose to feed the water to the jet nozzle pack attached to the pilot's body. These inventions are known as, "...hydro jet packs", and successful designs have used jet ski technology as the powerplant operating in a body of water an ocean, lake, or pool to provide the needed propulsion. Several hydro jet pack approaches have been successfully tested and put into production. Flow rate can be controlled by a throttle operator on the jet ski, or by the pilot using a remote actuator. Another significant difference with hydro jet packs is that they can be operated below the surface as well as above it. 
As of 2013, many hydro jetpack rental businesses are operating in various locations around the world. Topic: <laughs> Jetlev The Jetlev was the first hydroflight jetpack on the market, and its makers were awarded the first patents, in 2008, for hydrojetpacks. The Jetlev has the appearance of a typical jetpack, with two nozzles on a backpack propelling the rider upwards. It just has an umbilicus to the powering jet ski that provides the water for the thrust used. <laughs> Flyboard A flyboard has water jets under each of the pilot's feet. An optional feature is a lower thrust water jet for each arm for greater control. The power plant is a regular jet ski. Development for this approach was started in the spring of 2011. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Homemade versions. Episode 32 of Mythbusters investigates the urban legend of an affordable jet pack or rocket pack that can be built from plans purchased on the Internet. Extensive modifications were made by the Mythbusters team due to vagueness in the plans and because of the infeasibility of the specified engine mounting system. The jet pack produced by the Mythbusters had two ducted fans powered by ultralight-type piston engines. Fans complained that the use of piston engines destroyed the whole idea of the packs being truly based on jets, by which, presumably, they meant self-contained gas turbines. They found it was not powerful enough to lift a person off the ground, and was expensive to build. The plan specified a Rotax 503 ultralight engine, but they intended to use the more powerful and lighter Rotax 583 engine before a similar lighter unnamed engine was substituted. In fiction The concept of jetpacks appeared in popular culture, particularly science fiction, long before the technology became practical. Perhaps the first appearance was in pulp magazines. The 1896 novel The Country of the Pointed Furs mentions a «fog-shaped» man hovering low with a «the look of a pack on his back» who «flitted away out o' sight like a leaf the wind takes with it». The 1928 cover of Amazing Stories featured a man flying with a jetpack. When Republic Pictures planned to produce a superhero serial using its renowned, Flying Man, scenes as used in the adventures of Captain Marvel, the character of Captain Marvel was tied up in litigation with the owners of the character of Superman. For its post war superhero serial, Republic used a jetpack in King of the Rocket Men. The same stock special effects were used in other serials. While several science fiction novels from the 1950s featured jetpacks, it was not until the Bell Rocket Belt in the 1960s that the jetpack caught the imagination of the mainstream. Bell's demonstration flights in the U.S. and other countries created significant public enthusiasm. Jetpacks were featured in two episodes, Turu the Terrible and The Invisible Monster. Of the original Johnny Quest (1964–1965) animated television series, and a scene at the end of the closing credits in 1965, a jetpack appeared in the James Bond movie Thunderball when James Bond, played by Sean Connery, used a jetpack in the pre-title sequence to escape the bad guys and rendezvous with his French contact. The pack was piloted by Gordon Yeager and Bill Souter. In the Irwin Allen television series Lost in Space 1965 a jetpack was used by members of the Jupiter II expedition on several occasions. In 1966 the plot of the 21st book in the Rick Brandt series titled Rocket Jumper was based on a hydrogen peroxide-fueled jetpack. The book included a relatively detailed description of the design including use of a platinum metal screen catalyst. In the 1997 video game Crash Bandicoot 2, Cortex Strikes Back, the titular character Crash, operates a jetpack in two main levels, Rocket and Pack Attack. He also uses the jetpack in the final boss fight against Dr. Neo Cortex. The 1976 television series Arc 2 featured a jetpack called the Jet Jumper. In the Star Wars original trilogy, the bounty hunter Boba Fett used a jetpack. In the prequel trilogy, Django Fett also used a jetpack. In the 1982–1995 comics book series, the Rocketeer, the protagonist, Cliff Secord, acquires a stolen military jetpack and uses it to become the eponymous superhero. It was later adapted into a motion picture in 1991. 
the 95 mm 3.75 inch GI Joe action figure launch in 1982 included the Jump Jet Mobile Propulsion Unit Jetpack as an accessory. It was also featured prominently in the related GI Joe comic book series and cartoon. Jetpacks have been used by the title characters in several episodes of SWAT Cats cartoon series 1993-94. Jetpacks appear in the popular video game Halo Reach. On September 13, 2010, during a Halo, Reach launch party at London, England's Trafalgar Square, stuntman Dan Schlund of Powerhouse Productions Inc. Rocket Man firm, which provides jetpacks for use by marketing and sporting companies, donned a Halo-esque Spartan armor suit and a jetpack and maintain flight for 30 seconds before landing safely. The jetpack also appears in the 2012 video game Halo 4, developed by 343 Industries. Jetpacks also appeared in other video games, including Blood Rain, worn by Nazi troopers, Tribes, Giants, Citizen Kabuto, Armed and Dangerous, and the Pilot Wing series, in which it is referred to as a rocket belt. It is also accessible in the video game Grand Theft Auto, San Andreas. Fallout 4 also has a jetpack power armor feature. Grand Theft Auto Online added a jetpack called Thruster. As an usable vehicle on a content update on December 12, 2017, many science fiction movies have included jetpacks, most notably Minority Report, Sky Captain and The World of Tomorrow, and Tomorrowland. Running since 2013, Adventures in Jetpacks is a semi-regularly updated webcomic in which the cast of characters make regular use of jetpacks. <laughs> See also Backpack helicopter History of the jet engine Martin Jetpack, despite its name, is a backpack helicopter. Space Ranger device advertised in popular science 1970s Wingsuit flying <laughs>